a long story short, uh, the world is melting, and it's melting faster than we thought it was, unfortunately. So we have some interesting data in a couple of different areas. Uh, one of the, the most important is that global carbon dioxide emissions in 2011 hit record highs. Uh, so you see uh, up 3.2%. Now, a lot of that is due to China. Actually, interestingly, America had, I think, 1.7% fewer emissions in 2011. Uh, Maybe Japan that's why they were so mad at Obama. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, we want more to get some, get some stacks going here. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, unfortunately, uh, Japan's emissions slightly up because they, they're not using as much nuclear energy, obviously, after the Fukushima problem. Um, so so that's, that's, that's obviously bad. We don't want global emissions to be going higher. Uh, also, there's some consequences of this. Uh, sea levels have been rising 60% faster than originally expected. Now, this is during the period of roughly uh, about 1990 to 2010. Uh, so you see 60% faster, and that continues now. So every year, it's rising worse than we, than we thought it was. We didn't think it was going well before. Right, um, and, and so that, to that point, I understand the scientists were wrong. Uh, exactly. Th they were not alarmist enough. Enough, yeah. right. Okay, they, they underestimated how quickly the oceans would rise. Now, Fox News is going to cut out him saying the scientists were wrong, so we shouldn't trust them anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so we also have, uh, let's see, do you want, uh, why don't we go to this, the permafrost, because it's very interesting. So right now, in certain areas of the world, in the north, there's, there's permafrost, where organic material is, is frozen into the ground. And if that melts, it's going to release an insane amount of carbon dioxide. And the problem with that is that even if later on it was to refreeze, it doesn't bring the carbon dioxide back into the ground. And so that could help to accelerate uh, some of the, the warming that we're seeing, some of the climate change that we're seeing. Right, and I want to explain this because, look, the way that we are heating up the Earth is unnatural in the sense that it is man-made. It's because of the carbon emissions, et cetera. But there is also natural carbons. Yeah. And luckily, some of them are trapped underneath this permafrost in what is really an ancient forest to, to some yeah. degree, right? And so there's natural carbons in the world, but a lot of it is trapped in that permafrost. When it melts because of the human-made global warming, mm -hmm. it has a vicious cycle element to it where then the extra carbon dioxide is released and obviously, as John pointed out, we can't put that genie back in the bottle, right? Yeah. So again, that is that was underestimated by the scientists. And now they're freaking out and going, wait a minute, if on top of the man-made global warming, all that carbon dioxide is released, we're in much bigger trouble than we thought. What the scientists did accurately was forecast temperature increases, and, and everything seems fairly consistent with their forecast in that regard. But all these sort of... Uh, ancillary, if you will, aspects of the, the warming do seem to exceed all the estimates. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it, it's, it's disturbing. And what can be done? It, well, the CO2 emissions is really what can be done. I mean, that's really where the answer is. And it, it has to be addressed. And in, in the expanding industrialized world of China and, 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 and in nations that are just sort of, and China's a, probably obviously the leader, really getting hip to the parade, the CO2 parade, <laughs> you gotta, they've got to find alternative energy. Well, here's what happened when they went to the last round of negotiations on, on carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, China and India said, well, we're waiting for the U.S. to lead. If the U.S. steps up, then you know, we'll have to do something. We'll have to compromise, et cetera. When the U.S. didn't show up, Obama showed up on the last day and said, let's do a voluntary agreement. In other words, we don't have to do anything, right? Mm -hmm. Well. They were like, all right, well, we're not going to unilaterally say we're cutting our carbon emissions and put our economy uh, in a competitive disadvantage with the U.S., so that's it. We're not yeah. doing anything. And so one thing we can do is we can lead, and we can say, here's what we're doing, and let's work out negotiations where we agree and China agrees and India agrees, et cetera, on what we can do to limit this. If we don't, it is no exaggeration to say, we have an epic worldwide disaster headed towards our way. And yeah. there's no excuse for not leading now, because now there's not, you know, Obama's legacy can be served yes. by leading in this area. And there's no downside. Uh, I think it's very, very important during this next four years that he take the lead no, on this. The cap so, standards, I mean, he has led a little bit, at least in regard to that, but that's only a small portion of our total carbon dioxide output. That's true, so on, uh, on cars. Now, right after the election, what does Obama do? He says, oh, you know, all that stuff about protecting the environment? Yeah, I was kind of kidding. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I, they are leasing off all of the available oil leases in the Gulf. All of it, all of it, okay. 
So, and this is part of their all of the above strategy. Now, to be fair to Obama, he did say in the campaign that he loved oil and coal and more drilling, and he did. I mean, they had a debate about who was Mr. Coal and who was Mr. Oil during the debates, and Obama was saying, no, Romney doesn't love oil and coal as much as I do. And to prove that, he, they auctioned off the entire Gulf of Mexico oil reserves, in all. But here's the funny part. You know where they did, held the auction? The Superdome. Yeah. <laughs> in New Orleans. You remember the Hurricane Katrina Superdome? Huh? And as a guy wrote in Daily Coast, without a hint of irony, right? Yeah. Like, all right, so where can we, so environmental disaster, mm -hmm. which might kind of affect, as it has in the past, this exact area. Well, let's rub it in their face. Let's go to the Superdome in Louisiana and auction it all off. Yeah. So th this, and this, this disaster is, uh, a freight train, and it's yeah. and it's headed in our direction. And, and by the way, for for the record, um, the uh, the ones responsible for the Deepwater Horizon BP, they were forced to sit on the sidelines for all of this, but only for a year. They can get back in the game. Yeah. You know, they're just they're on the injured reserve list. <laughs> the the ocean is fine now, right? Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, within a year, the we'll, we'll have solved environmental disaster in our history. <laughs> right. yeah. And we'll have solved climate change in a year anyway. Can I make one final point on this? Um, specifically about the permafrost. It may seem odd that we're focusing on this, but I think that it's an example of a sort of phenomenon that should make you see climate change and our need to fix it in, in a whole different way. There are some problems that you cannot you can't wait on. Like if your house is, is burning down, you can't do the dishes first because there might not be a house later. And so when you have things like permafrost where once it's out, it's just out. When you have things like the fact that the ocean heats up faster with the dark water of the ocean, which is one of the problems with, with so much ice melting because that formerly some of that light was from the sun that was being reflected out, the solar radiation. But once it's gone, it now accelerates. It's non-linear. It's not like it's a problem now and it'll be a little bit more of a problem next year. At some point, there is a climate cliff that we can go off of. Fiscal cliff, fake. Climate cliff, quite real and quite dangerous. The climate cliff is a great way of That's phrasing true, it, John. And look, let me make it one of my usual jank predictions here. So they had a list in one of these articles of all the different cities by the water that are in serious yeah. peril because the water is rising much quicker than we expected. And there was a bunch of foreign cities, which of course, since we're number one, we don't care about those. Uh, but it, New York and Miami were on the list. Now, New York is Rome. They will protect Rome under all conditions, right? They will build giant walls and dams yeah. and et cetera. But I keep thinking, man, I got to get down to Miami. I gotta see it before it's gone, okay? <laughs> yeah. uh, and I lived there for a while, and I'm not even kidding. Like, I'm not saying it's gonna happen next year or the next or the year after that. Although it is happening much quicker than we expected, yeah. but I would be shocked if in my lifetime we didn't lose at least South Beach, okay? Wow. Yeah, uh, you know, Miami there's is large. There's obviously big portions of it that'll be fine, but the but South Beach is if you've ever been on it is almost in the water to begin with, okay? It's got huge amounts of water on both sides. All the ocean has to do is rise a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. And so the way, as I read all these stories, I was like, oh, gone. It's gone, man. In our lifetimes, don't buy property on South Beach. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, buy like a mile in, because that will go up in value once it becomes beach. Yeah, yeah. that's true, it'll be ocean front then. <laughs> buy a mile in. <laughs> because what happens is, as the, the, the next step of all of this, that CO2, the release, the permafrost melt, all of it, additional CO2, it creates tremendous traps for more heat energy, right, yeah. which is what we're talking about. And then super hurricanes come in and they wipe out South Beach. That, and, and you say, well, really? I mean, is that, yeah, really, because we've just seen it. You've just seen these storm surges now bigger than ever before. The, everything's getting bigger because the earth is trying to balance all this heat energy. So you're exactly right. I mean, it, it's a bizarre notion to think, but it's possible that these, that's how it happens. The yeah. same way that New York suffered a, 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 super, a super storm, uh, a super hurricane comes in and it wipes out much of the, the coastline of Florida. And it's not like Miami doesn't get hit with hurricanes. Already. <laughs> right? right. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, for people who can't visualize it, remember what Mark just said, Hurricane Sandy, the superstorm Sandy, you saw what happened in Staten Island, Brooklyn, all over New York, all the flooding, right? All the water going. And that's all storm surge. These are on, 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 at levels that they've never seen before. Well, well, what a coincidence. We're also seeing levels that they've never seen before in CO2 gases and permafrost melt and sea surface temperatures rising. Hmm, I wonder if it's all related. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and looking at a few decades. Right, and if you do that kind of damage 
institutional structural damage to South Beach at one point, they're not going to recover, right? If it's bad enough. People and it's only a matter of time before it gets bad enough. We're on the clock. And here's one thing you cannot stop, the water. 